that. Right. Welcome to uh, the CLSB seminar. Today's seminar is somewhat special. It is going to be a special seminar in a series that we'll continue over many years, we hope. The special thing is that we're getting some of our own people back. So Shao Chang Guo is our speaker today. Shao came to Hopkins even before CLSP, or maybe about the same time as CLSP, but definitely before Fred Jelinek. And uh, he was, in fact, our first graduate. When we started the seminar series, also about eight years ago, we were, of course, looking for prominent people in the field to come and give lectures. And almost 10 years have gone by, and we're starting to realize that some of the more fun people in the field are indeed our graduates. So it's a pleasure to welcome Xiao back. Xiao uh, came to Hopkins from China. He got a bachelor's degree from the Chinese University of Science and Technology, but of course his PhD is from here. So to some of you, or some of the faculty, for example, he doesn't need any introduction. Perhaps, uh, no, there's no one here who overlapped with you. Oh, there. No, 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 David, you don't count. But okay, Hans and uh, Silvio. So we are seeing the passing of the guard, uh, the changing of the guard. We are the news people, and this is what we are aspiring to. Shout uh, without further ado. Okay, thank you, Sanchev. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, come back. Uh, Okay, today uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the work that we uh, did uh, um, in the last few months uh, about uh, um, using cross-domain data to improve our statistical parser. This is a joint uh, work with uh, Min Tang. He uh, did a summer internship uh, in this summer uh, at IBM. Okay, so before I talk about the topic, I want to take this opportunity to uh, to tell you uh, what, uh, as a group, uh, as an NLP group at IBM, what uh, we have been doing, uh, uh, certain projects we have been doing. Um, the statistics of passing uh, started almost a decade ago, uh, uh, and uh, we have uh, used <coughs> this technology in, uh, in many applications, national language applications. Uh, I list a few here. Uh, the first is uh, we, uh, we have been using a, a distribution based uh, statistical, statistical parser in, uh, uh, to uh, build a uh, language understanding component uh, in spoken dialogue systems. Uh, and the same uh, technology has been used in uh, information uh, extraction, translingual uh, question answering, uh, entity uh, extraction, so on and so forth. And Kishore and uh, his team are are working on statistical machine translation these days, uh, focus on uh, two language pairs from uh, Chinese to English and uh, Arabic to uh, English. There are also a few people are doing uh, cross lingual search, uh, TDT, uh, text categorization, and uh, audio index, and this is a, a MATLAB uh, uh, project. Uh, I, I won't take your questions for uh, this slide. Uh, because first, uh, I, I only know uh, some of the items uh, uh, well. And uh, second, I think the best way, uh, especially for students, if you want to find out the details, the best way is uh, to come and join us. Uh, <laughs> um, we, the, our group is still active hiring. Uh, so if you're looking for some job or close to our graduation, so please do send us resume. OK, so let's get down to the business. Um, I'm going to start with the motivation of this work. And uh, then I'm going to talk uh, 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 these items one by one. Um, OK, so we all know that uh, the impact of our training data for uh, statistical parsing uh, in, uh, and for stat statistical modeling in general, for example, uh, speech recognition. This curve shows that the, uh, the uh, F measure on Wall Street Journal uh, Pantry Bank, uh, x axis is the amount of training data. This is a one uh, uh, basic parser. As we can see that uh, if we increase the uh, amount of our training data, uh, the more training data we have, the better performance uh, is. But then the problem is that uh, to uh, acquire more data, especially with a uh, uh, full tree uh, labeled, it's uh, quite expensive. So there's an issue that uh, they, there's a need to uh, re reduce the, uh, the laboring work. For example, use a uh, supervised, uh, use an unsupervised method, or maybe a uh, semi-supervised uh, method. Here I list a few work uh, that uh, on this track. Uh, for example, in 97, Chaniak used uh, this parser, passed uh, uh, about uh, 10 million or maybe 30 million words. 
and uh, uh, put it back in, uh, in training and uh, he reported small gain. And Brahma and Mitchell proposed uh, a method, a so-called a co-training method. The basic idea is that uh, he uh, assumes that uh, uh, for a problem you uh, have a two independent view of uh, training data and you can build two uh, separate models and use one model to uh, annotate the data for the, for the other model. The, the past workshop, uh, a group of people uh, explored the same idea for statistical uh, parsing. Um, and in 1998, uh, Andrew McLean and uh, Nagan used a uh, mixed labeled and uh, unlabeled data for the uh, document classification. They used the EM algorithm to uh, infer uh, labels for uh, unlabeled data. And uh, uh, you see, this is uh, basically uh, we are going to use the EM algorithm uh, in the same uh, spread. Uh, in the past uh, few years, of, we have been doing some work uh, uh, also on this track. Uh, in uh, actually a workshop for automatic speech uh, recognition and understanding, uh, I used uh, um, a transformation-based method to uh, adapt a statistical path. Uh, you can find the details in, uh, in this paper if you're interested. And in this past year, we, uh, we did some uh, work in active learning. Uh, and you can find uh, our paper in uh, ACL uh, this year. So uh, let me talk a little bit more uh, details about active learning. The basic idea of ac active learning is that uh, compared with, uh, say, uh, passive learning is that uh, passive learning, you ask a human being to uh, label a certain amount of data and build uh, uh, a statistical model, so it's a monolithic uh, process. <coughs> uh, whereas uh, for active learning, you uh, say you, you start with uh, uh, a certain amount of uh, initial training data, and uh, you build a model. And uh, the idea is that you want to use this model to pick from a, a large, unlabeled data a subset to uh, to to label. So the idea is to want to uh, reduce the amount of uh, labeling work. So this is a learning curve we got uh, in um, in the domain of a double communicator. Uh, are, are you going to say how we pick that subset? Uh, no, uh, that was in the ACL talk. Uh, I don't have time to cover that. Uh -huh. yeah. But uh, uh, I just want to give a, a result summary here. The uh, uh, the curve in red is the uh, learning curve for active learning. And uh, uh, blue is uh, you are randomly selecting the same amount of uh, uh, training data. Uh, the dashed line is that if you labeled all the, uh, the training data you have, that's the performance bound. As you can see, that the, uh, the active learning can uh, approach the performance bound um, much faster than uh, random selection. Those, th there's a value if you want to uh, uh, develop a system at the early stage, if you use um, active learning, you can get much better. Uh, uh, basically, you can um, get the same level of performance much faster than, uh, say, you are uh, just uh, uh, annotated all the uh, training uh, corpus. Okay, so, but the uh, bottom line uh, for active learning is that uh, you select a subset of training uh, corpus, but you have to do some annotation. So the work I'm going to talk about today is that, uh, can we not do annotation at all? But uh, instead of looking at, uh, let's say, uh, cross-domain, uh, I'm going to use uh, cross-domain, cross-corpus interchangeably. Uh, by cross-domain, I not necessarily uh, mean that a different uh, giraffe of uh, tags, but uh, by, uh, say, uh, uh, laboring for a, dom uh, for a corpus is different from uh, the domain we're interested in. Uh, this will be, uh, become clear uh, uh, after I give some examples. And we want to take advantage of uh, the uh, uh, laboring work uh, down for uh, other purpose. Now the next question is that, uh, for example, if I take the Wall Street, Wall Street Journal uh, Pantry Bank, uh, can we find uh, useful cross-domain data? So th in this table, I, I list a few <coughs> examples that uh, uh, we think that are potentially useful for improving uh, passing accuracy. 
Uh, on the English side, we have uh, in-domain data, uh, Wall Street Journal, uh, Pantry Bank. And uh, at the IBM, we have uh, another three bank uh, annotated in a, in, uh, uh, for a corpus of uh, AP News article, but the annotation is very different. I'm going to show some examples. Uh, another potential source is that uh, we have uh, a corpus with name entity annotation. So maybe we can use some uh, information from uh, this corpus, for example. Uh, we have been also working on the Chinese password. And uh, uh, LDC released uh, uh, two batches of uh, uh, three banks. Uh, so this is our in-domain data. And uh, recently, we uh, became aware that uh, a Beijing University in China, they have, uh, they have annotated a lot of data with a part of speech tagging. Uh, so this is a potential useful, although the, uh, the part of speech tagging style is very different from our country bank. And uh, uh, we also have uh, about uh, half a million words of uh, Chinese corpus with a uh, name entity annotated. So these are a few uh, potential corpus that will be useful for us. And uh, uh, I claim here that uh, cross-domain data uh, provides some but not all uh, information for the purpose of uh, our parsing. So Sean, in case of the Chinese, what is the source of the Chinese country bank? And the Chinese, the PKU. Uh, PKU is people's daily. It's one year of people, people's daily. Uh, country, bank, uh, I don't know what's the source, but uh, it's also general news articles. Yeah. And the name entity is uh, FIPS. Uh, okay. okay, so let's take a look at the, uh, this is an example of uh, uh, AP3 bank. Um, that's the uh, uh, the, the the tree we, we, we found in the uh, in this tree bank, and the same sentence if uh, we annotate in uh, in pantry bag, uh, Wall Street pantry bank style. That's the past tree. So I just want to highlight a few uh, common constituents in the in these two uh, corpora. For example, the first uh, NP constructs and this uh, VP. So let me uh. Go back to the last slide. See, uh, although uh, I mean, uh, APT bank has different label, but uh, you see that the, this constituent uh, is common uh, in both corpora, and so is this uh, VP, uh, VP phrase, and uh, so th this are sentence segment. So it looks like uh, at least you know, we can use. Uh, uh, so starting from uh, APT bank, if you, we can do something to migrate, at least we can get a partial information from the uh, uh, APT uh, bank. Of course, there are, um, uh, it's not always that you can do direct mapping. For example, in, uh, uh, that's the style of uh, what's uh, pantry bank style. You have a uh, unary construct uh, as goes to VP, which is missing in, uh, uh, in the uh, Original AP tree bank, and sometimes uh, we uh, there are this more serious problem of uh, uh, cross bracketing. So this is a, a one sample sentence I found in the AP tree bank. Uh, that's the the AP tree bank style of annotation. Uh, for some reason, the the design of that tree bank decides this is a constituent. And uh, I found uh, uh, almost, uh, uh, almost the same uh, sentence segment from my uh, infantry bank, although this is, uh, 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 this is a current complete and this is a past uh, completion. But uh, see, uh, the, uh, the infantry bank uh, design says this is a one uh, uh, constituent. So clearly, there's a, a cross brackets. So we have to be careful if you want to uh, use uh, uh, brackets and directly. Okay, now let me uh, in the next few slides uh, talk about uh, the uh, PKU part of speech uh, tag corpus. Um, the, the PKU uh, corpus has 67 uh, part of speech tags, and the UPN Tree Bank released by LDC has 33 uh, part of speech tags. Uh, they are 
after we look at mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the two uh, copper, we found that there are various types of mapping if you want to map a uh, power speech tag. For example, um, the one to one mapping, uh, the noun in a PKU can be uh, directly mapped to uh, this tag in uh, UPEN. And uh, um, uh, PKU has a personal name tag and uh, organ organization name tag. Well, in a new pantry bag, you only have like uh, uh, one uh, proper noun tag. So these two uh, power speech tags goes to the same uh, tag in a new pantry bag. Uh, and sometimes you have uh, one too many uh, mapping. For example, this word is um, it's an auxiliary word in a PKU uh, tree bank. And the design of the, uh, uh, you, the pantry bank decided that uh, this uh, auxiliary word has uh, two uh, syntactic rows and uh, it is assigned two tags based on the context the word is used. Uh, sometimes we have more difficult cases. You have, uh, uh, this is a, a, a pronoun tag and this is a pronoun uh, morpheme tag. And uh, this tag can sometimes can be mapped in a UPNT style as a determinant. Uh, sometimes it's a pronoun, and so is this uh, tag. So we have a uh, many-to-many uh, mapping. Okay, this is an example sentence, uh, sentence segment. Words in blue are the first category of a mapping, uh, either it's one-to-one or m-to-one. And the words in red is that uh, it's one-to-many mapping. Uh, so what I did is that I look at the uh, context. If uh, I can resolve the ambiguity based on uh, limited context, then uh, I'm, I, I will say that uh, <coughs> I will use the, 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 the tag. Otherwise, uh, I'll remove the, I'll say that I don't know the tag, the corresponding tag in the uh, uh, UPEN style. And, uh, but insist that this is a word boundary because in uh, Chinese we have uh, this problem of uh, uh, word segmentation problem. And sometimes the, uh, the, there's a style difference. Uh, the one word, for example, in, a, in, in PKU style may not be a one, uh, one word in, uh, uh, in the UPEN style. So if that is the case, uh, I drop even the boundary, word boundary. Uh, and the, the, this is a summary result. By doing this, uh, it's a, uh, this is a, a light, lightweight uh, uh, processor. We can map about uh, 93 words uh, from a PKU uh, corpus into a pantry uh, bank style with a uh, UPEN style or power speech tags. And 6% uh, of the words, uh, I can keep a word boundary. And uh, there's only about 1% <coughs> of the words that uh, I, I'm not sure about the tag and the even word boundary. So Shell, this, this mapping between the tags, this is obtained only by knowing the UPEN tree bank tag set and the tag data from PKU. You don't need any tag bank tree bank data to discover this mapping. Uh, in fact, I looked at that. I, I got help from one of my colleagues. Uh, I looked at both because you have to uh, really make sure that this mapping is accurate. Well, so that's my question. If your goal is to take the Chinese PKU tree bank and construct a parser that will parse like the UPEN tree bank, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't assume any existence of UPEN parsed data. Or are you allowed to use some stuff? Uh, this is not automatically. I, uh, this is a. Uh, no, this is manual, but right. there's one thing where you just use the tag set and sort of you have, like, you know, which markers so or somebody has a grammar and a text. Power, you use that information to construct this mapping. Yeah, but uh, you, in any case, you have to know the meaning of, uh, I mean, the, the, what is the uh, category for a part of speech tag in the UPEN, you have to, you know, what is the cement, uh, a syntactic category, right? You, you have to have that knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the, uh, the message by looking at the, uh, this uh, various corpora is that it uh, looks like we, uh, we can uh, convert uh, the labeling information in uh, cross-domain uh, 
and uh, represent that information as uh, constraints in the in the uh, as a partial tree in uh, into the, the domain we're interested in. And uh, uh, when we do that, we have to uh, uh, make sure that uh, in water granularity we uh, we do the mapping. Uh, I, I understand it in the part of speech case, but I don't understand it in the structure uh, of the parsing. Because how do you know that uh, some section is parsed the same way? Yeah, th that is this question. It's autom not automatic. We have to uh, look at the uh, two corpora to... I see. So you open... No, no, no. But I mean in a particular sentence. Yes. How do you know which part of it you can use? Yeah, this is a question. We uh, we don't really know the answer, ex especially uh, if uh, without looking at the data. So are you proposing to look at the data? Yes. I see. So you so you're just going to save the labor of parsing it, but but you will still decide whether it's acceptable or not. Yes. I see. Yes. Oh, on a, on a per sentence basis. That's what it seems to be saying. Are, are you saying you're going to look at every sentence and decide what's true? No, not saying. We're uh, looking at some uh, example sentences. and uh, yeah. oh, okay. No, we're not going through uh, each sentence in the corpora. Well, well uh, OK. Well, I don't understand how you can decide, in general, that a certain bar structure is the same, would, would have been the same if you went three men. Yeah, we don't know the, the answer for sure, but uh, there are certain things we can do. For example, uh, we did a few experiments, for example, keeping all the brackets. But there's an issue, as I, I showed in uh, one example, yes. you have cross brackets. Right. And we also did, uh, uh, by one rule, for example, keeping the, uh, the highest uh, constituents. Um, yeah. okay. But the bottom line is that you have to look at data, see how useful that, uh, a particular corpus is to you. Uh, anyhow, so uh, we um, uh, looks like we can get some uh, information from cross-domain data, but what about the uh, the structures that are missing? And that is the uh, where the EM algorithm comes in. So we treat this as an uh, incomplete data problem. Uh, let's say we we get partial pass pass trees from uh, uh, labels in uh, cross-domain and uh, uh, get a partial tree, uh, the completed data is going to be uh, the uh, missing part together with the, the uh, partial tree. All right. And uh, our goal is that we want to learn a model that maximizes the probability of the, uh, the partial tree, that uh, the partial trees that are available to us. Okay. So let me give you an example by what I mean, what is the uh, for example, uh, take the uh, AP tree bank, and by looking at uh, a few examples, uh, let's say we are uh, sure that the uh, highest, uh, you know, a constituent want to keep. So in this, if we made that uh, decision, then uh, say uh, all the uh, constituents in a solid uh, rectangle are the constituent want to uh, make, uh, we want to keep, and everything in that line are uh, something missing. Okay. So in this example, constraints is that we know this is a constituent, but we don't know what is on top and what is underneath of that label. And, and how do you know it's a constituent? Because you have oh, this is the on the uh, you have a, a pass tree in the AP tree bank, right? Okay. We the, for example for the, this example is that you 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 made a uh, there's a rule saying that uh, I want to keep the Topmost constituents. So the topmost NP is going to be kept right. in in tree. Right. So you believe that those will be NPs no matter whether you did it AP style or you style. Right. But underneath that NP, you don't know what. I don't know. Yes. And you don't know at these top level things how they're going to be connected. No. Yeah. So that's uh, what I meant by a partial tree. So in terms of label brackets, you're pegging some brackets and you're removing the others. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, okay, so um, so this is a missing data problem. To maximize uh, this uh, quantity, uh, EM algorithm states that uh, we all all we have to do is some uh, maximizing at each iteration. We maximizing the auxiliary function, which is a uh, 
conditional ex expectation of a completed data. Uh, S is a sentence. Uh, theta is our model parameters. Uh, taking the conditional uh, uh, expectation, uh, write it out. That's the, the formula we'll end up with. So if you uh, look at this formula closely, um, let's say if uh, all the information is given, well, so the um, uh, TM is empty. So this term, uh, the, the term inside the summation is independent of TM. Uh, a TP partial is, is the same as T. Then uh, these two terms cancel out, and you get it back the normal uh, likelihood uh, formula. All right, uh, to implement the, uh, the EM algorithm, so we needed the facility to, to do constraint decoding because uh, we uh, get constraints from our cross domain data. Uh, we treat partial tree labels as constraints. And uh, we found the missing labels consistent with uh, TP. So uh, all the decoding results that uh, are inconsistent with that uh, are partial constraints are going to be uh, discarded. And uh, in practice, we have to do pruning. We, we can't possibly do, uh, uh, so far we haven't figured out a way to, to complete, uh, uh, say, uh, the counterpart of forward, backward uh, training. So we do top end training. And uh, in the course of doing that, we found that, because uh, we have to do this uh, again and again, so we uh, spend quite a bit of time to speed up the decoder. Uh, we, 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 we get, uh, uh, anywhere from two times to 16 times of speed up based on uh, uh, the, our decoder is a beam uh, search decoder. So depending on how wide your beam is, the wide, the more hypothesis you, you search, the, uh, the, the larger the speeding factor is. Okay, so, um, so I've talked about the, uh, the uh, processing cross-domain data to the domain we're interested in. And uh, I talked about EM algorithm to uh, deal with the missing information. So here's the, the picture that uh, the, uh, the, the process we are uh, uh, we're using in, uh, in this uh, semi-supervised learning. We started uh, with a certain amount of uh, in-domain data build a model and take uh, the cross-domain data and we have to to, start to do some uh, pre-processing to map the, the, the labels in cross-domain data to uh, partial tree constraints to the domain we're interested in. And then we take the model. Uh, so in the first error, that's when you get these the blocks you were showing in the earlier. Yeah, for picture. example. Okay. Uh, can, can you break it down further? So can you say, that, for example, if I had a sentence in which I knew four of the blocks, mm -hmm. So can I then break it down into four examples where the top of that subtree is going to be an NP or a UP or whatever? What do you mean by uh, uh, so I mean, within that, it's a separate, you, you can decode each part separately, right? Because you want to know what's inside under the NP. Yeah, but uh, after you do that, you have to find the construction on top of NP. Okay. Is, your, is the rest of it context free? So that the two probabilities are independent? We're using statistical process, so uh, it's, uh, we don't have an explicit uh, context free rule. Okay, so uh, you take the partial tree uh, as constraints and do a constraint decoding. Um, and in essence, and then uh, we take the uh, decoding output, uh, put it back in, a, in the training with uh, the right counts. And then an update model, so this is a closed loop. Okay, any questions before? I just want to be clear, how, how are you using the, the fully labeled tree bank? Are you using it to construct a trier or are you just using it to seed the model? We use the seed model uh, after we use that seed model to build them, uh, to uh, use the uh, fully annotated uh, corpus to build a model. Uh, and we're going to use the, uh, both the, uh, the uh, the fully passed tree and the, you know, the decoding output with partial constraints. So, so they stay with you through the whole game process. Right, right. There's no reason to uh, you know, ignore them. But do the others get the equal weight? No, they don't. That's the easy step you take the, uh, to do right counting. No, 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 but... No, the fully passed tree always has a, a count one for sentence. Yeah. Uh, for the... Uh, Decoding output, whatever the probability uh, the model gives, you keep that as a count. 
well, then you're giving it full count because you distribute the count, but the total that you distribute is one. Yeah, total is one. Yes. So, so the um, so whatever you get from the uh, ro not wrong, but for, for from the auxiliary uh, corpus counts as much as the other. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the, the, the statistical parser we used in uh, this uh, work is a max entropy parser. Uh, you can find the reference in uh, Adelie's uh, paper, Manson paper. Uh, we, uh, we have two uh, parsers, uh, we have models for two languages. Uh, on the Chinese side, we have a uh, new bank. Uh, they, they released it in two batches. First batch is uh, uh, 100,000 words, second batch is about 120,000 words. Uh, the cross domain data we use is the uh, TKU 1 million words with a part of speech tank, but without a pass tree. The, on the English side, we, uh, the in domain data is uh, 1 million words at UPenn tree bank. And uh, we have this uh, AP a tree bank, also about uh, 1 million words. Uh, this table uh, summarizes the uh, experiment setup. Okay, let's start with the uh, Chinese side. Uh, the experiment uh, labeled with CE1, uh, the baseline is trained with the uh, first release of uh, UPenn tree bank. Uh, the test set is about, uh, the, uh, about 10% of the, uh, the first batch, and that's the baseline. Uh, result if uh, you train a model on 100,000 words and test it on uh, this test set, uh, precision recall. So we, uh, this set experiment is just to, to see if uh, what is the, uh, the performance bound by using a second batch of a, a pantry bank uh, added it to the training data, that's the performance. Uh, if we use the same amount of uh, cross domain data with uh, uh, without fully uh, pass tree, uh, this is, is going to be the, uh, the performance bound. So uh, CE2 is uh, it's a real experiment. You, uh, we, we have baseline starting with 100,000 words, and also we have baseline starting with uh, 200,000 200, words. Uh, this is the, uh, the performance on the same test set. Uh, by the way, th this, two num there, this, this number is better than this one because uh, this number was got at the early stage of our experiments and in the course we, uh, we changed the feature set so we, we get a better, better perform, uh, baseline. And we use PKU data as cross domain data. I'm going to talk about more uh, experiments result on uh, using PKU data. It's not uh, in this table. And this is similar on the English side. Uh, we had, we Trained a baseline model use about 10% of our Wall Street Journal uh, tree bank. And uh, the test uh, is section 23 and 24 for those who uh, know of the Wall Street Journal uh, pantry bank. That's the baseline performance. And if you uh, use the rest of uh, the Wall Street Journal tree bank with a fully uh, pass tree and put it back and add it to training data, that's the performance we got. Uh, we're going to uh, use the LP3 bank as cross domain data. Okay. So what are these performance performance? This is like uh, use the uh, Intel or training set. Okay. With uh, this four tree. Okay. okay. So one question for doing this type of semi-supervised learning is that uh, how much uh, amount of supervision information um, is uh, sufficient for us to get some gain? So this, uh, this picture answers that question. Uh, the experiment was done at E1, meaning that uh, the baseline model is trained with 10% of uh, uh, UPenn tree bank, and they use the uh, rest of 90% as the uh, uh, EM data. So uh, the x-axis is the amount of uh, labels you keep. So if we keep a uh, uh, if you don't strip all the uh, uh, labeling information and uh, you know do a, use the uh, baseline model, decode it and put it back in training, in fact, it hurt uh, your model. If you keep the uh, 
uh, 18% of our labels, that's the, perform the, per the relative performance gain uh, we can get. Uh, if we keep the, you know, 80% uh, of our label and train and model, that's the performance gain we can get on the test set. So uh, this is really no surprising, so the more our supervision information we have, the, the more gain uh, we can get. Here you're doing this uh, on the basis of the UBAN 3 bank. Consequently, you're sure that whatever supervision you uh, apply, it's correct supervision. Uh, yes. Which is not the case yeah. in the other. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this set of experiment just it's, it's a kind of a cheating experiment to uh, see uh, you know, how, yeah, yeah, I yeah, how much inform supervision information we need. Uh, this is real. Uh, this is. Uh, Curve shows the performance uh, if we trained with uh, various amount of uh, uh, you pay uh, you train a baseline model with a various amount of uh, uh, you pay three bank data uh, starting with uh, twenty thousand words, forty thousand words, eighty thousand words. Um, so the uh, light blue curve is the uh, F measure on the test set if you just use the you pay three bank and uh, the yellow bars are the F measure if you add uh, 100,000 words PKU data with part of speech tagging information and uh, you use the baseline model to the decoding on these corpus and put it back in the training. So as you can see that uh, you, we, we can get significant gain if uh, the, the initial model was tra uh, trained with uh, insufficient uh, amount of data. Uh, but the, the gain uh, is eroded as you uh, increase the, uh, the the training data. In fact, if you train the baseline is trained with uh, uh, 200,000 words, it, the performance degrades. But that's due to the fact that the EM algorithm is wrong. Yeah, that's right. You um, that's right. It, it, yes, there's a question. Uh, I was going to say it seems like um, you could also interpret it that I mean it seems like in the hundred case where there's a matched amount of UPenn and PKU data, there's still a slight increase. And it's only in the 200K case where there's not, where there's a decrease. So maybe if you had, you know, 200K of PKU, so there is match. I don't know. If I have 200, you will see that, uh, see, uh, the, I didn't do all that. I have slide to show the amount of uh, cross-domain data, the, uh, the impact on the performance, yes. If you, for example, train Collins parser, because you're using maximum entropy, right? Yes. And just get that amount of data annotated with Collins parser, and now you use it with, as training data. I mean, that would be a nice thing to see. If you use a different method to annotate data, mm -hmm. what can you get from that data? Because you will have mistakes in there, the way you have it. So you're just suggesting like a you know, co-training type of approach? At least see if, if annotating with another parser that is pretty good will give you the same gain, or if it gives you more gain than you, you get with, with the PKU, then it doesn't make sense to use the PKU. If it gives you less, then this is better. Right? Yeah, that's a possibility, we, just that we haven't uh, explored that, uh, you know, using multiple models. I'm going to talk about, uh, this is one of the future work we may do. Yeah. So this is the same curve, but uh, in relative uh, error reduction. <coughs> Yeah, uh, so uh, this table shows that the effect of if you use the entire uh, PKU part of speech uh, corpus, what the, how uh, would that change the performance? Turns out that it doesn't make a huge difference for, for the small baseline. Um, for the large baseline, I haven't got the result yet. Uh, 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 presumably, it won't uh, uh, help the performance uh, uh, by uh, knowing that the fact if you only add 100,000 words, the performance uh, decreases. Okay, so uh, we spent most of the time working on the Chinese parser and uh, the, the some student did spend a few days working on, uh, on the English side. Uh, he did two sets of experiments uh, by taking AP data. He kept all the brackets. He did this by 
because uh, at, uh, w uh, at the time when we uh, know the existence of this AP QBank, we were quite excited because you know it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very rare to have uh, uh, that amount, uh, much amount, uh, that amount of uh, fully labeled data. And uh, we said to ourselves, let's uh, just keep all the brackets and do uh, you know a few EM iterations. Who, who did the AP the summer student. Uh, the APQ bank, I don't know. Uh, I thought you would know. The uh, Todd passed us to the, uh, this corpus. I, yeah, uh, we, yeah. But he didn't do the corpus. I don't know. We couldn't find any documentation, for example. We had to guess the meaning of those labels and tags. Which was the one you telling us that you had housewives in England doing? In Lancaster. Well, this is in Lancaster. This is are you sure this was even manually annotated versus automatically annotated? Uh, this is manual. Uh, it looks like Salim knows quite well of this corpus. Who uh, does? Salim. Uh -huh. Well, maybe it's Levan. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, uh, so he, once that we keep all the brackets, and later on we came aware that uh, you know this, a certain for certain uh, type of our constituency you, we have a problem of a cross brackets. So clearly, some of the supervision information is wrong. Uh, and uh, then he backed off. He said, uh, "I just keep uh, the highest brackets for our highest constituent." And uh, in all these two. Uh, in both our uh, set of experiments, uh, it's not a help, quite helpful to a small model. It, it didn't really degrade uh, a lot, but it doesn't help. It doesn't help uh, the performance. And if you start uh, the initial model is well trained, and then in fact it hurt performance. I think the we uh, the uh, the this AP track I think is, is <coughs> precious. We uh, we we haven't uh, made full use of uh, this uh, corpus. We think. And uh, as I said, there are some aspect difference, some constraints are wrong. So, so th th it's clear that we need to do more work to get it, if we want to get a gain from an uh, AB3 bank. Okay, so, um, so we're doing a semi-supervised training. And uh, clearly there's a problem that uh, when you use cross-domain data and uh, you uh, get a partial uh, supervision information cross-domain, and use the, a, a, a seed model to decode this data, the decoding output is going to be noisy, uh, meaning that uh, some of the uh, supervision information uh, is errorful. So we have to deal with this pro problem, uh, how to train your model with noisy data. And uh, one thing uh, I have started doing is that uh, uh, thinking of our, our methods to uh, constrain the model. One way we can do is that, for example, find the time. Okay, so in the max entropy model, for each feature we have a parameter, uh, for each feature of i. So the way we do our uh, parameter time is that uh, we uh, classify our features into classes. And uh, we say that uh, all the features, uh, for each feature you have a corresponding a parameter. P R sub i, and uh, we decide <coughs> for all the uh, features in uh, in the class C here, they're going to uh, share one updating uh, parameter. Okay, for those who are familiar with the iterative scaling, that's basically the formula when you are um, uh, updating your model parameter. Okay, so the idea here is that uh, we want to um, move the parameter for feature i from a P sub i to uh, P sub i prime. Uh, if only the evidence is strong enough. Okay, so this is some of the preliminary result. The EM data is uh, Chinese name entity data. Uh, so if we don't do any, uh, don't do anything, just to say uh, do a plain uh, EM uh, learning, uh, that's the performance, which is worse than the baseline model. And if you do a prime to time, uh, we don't get the uh, a lot of gain, but at least it doesn't uh, degrade uh, uh, the, the model performance. Uh, I, I have the result for the uh, PKU data. Hopefully, uh, because uh, name, Chinese name entity uh, supervision information is fast. The, uh, it's only about like five to uh, between five to ten percent of uh, words with the uh, name entity annotation. Uh, hopefully, if uh, we use uh, PKU data, we have uh, 
more supervision information. Okay. So the summary result is that for asymmetric supervised learning, at least for the uh, uh, corpora we, we have worked with so far, uh, this method is most helpful when initial model is uh, trained with insufficient uh, training data. Uh, and we think it's, more, uh, it's probably most useful in the early stage of uh, uh, system de development. Any questions? Uh, okay, so um, uh, I just started on uh, thinking of a constraining model, and uh, clearly I will do uh, will probably do more on uh, uh, on how to constrain model and how to uh, classify features. And another idea would be that uh, to make use of a cross-domain data is that they use that the builder model uh, for that corpus and they use that uh, output and they in, in, uh, uh, use that model to in, induce uh, features for the in-domain model. Uh, the other thing we can do is that uh, what if we uh, uh, use multiple models and do a sample selection as people have uh, done in the past workshop. Another possibility is that if you have partial tree, what if you just train uh, on the uh, the partial trees, you uh, ignore those uh, constituent data with uh, missing information. Take that and see, uh, uh, see if they'll help your baseline model. OK, so that's the conclusion of uh, my talk. Yes? So when you train your model with the, constraint, uh, with the constraints from your, your cross-domain data, mm -hmm. Did you also do the experiments where you don't constrain your model at all? You don't constrain and use the constraints at all. And are you going to get the same invest or a very different invest? Um, well, I mean, we did this as a experiment on the uh, Wall Street Journal uh, UPenn tree bank, right? We strip all the label information, do a decoding, put it back. In fact, that hurts up uh, the baseline performance. Uh, presumably, if you use cross-domain data, use data not in the same domain, that uh, will become uh, worse. Well, one of the major problems is, of course, the EM algorithm, which maximizes the wrong thing. And uh, uh, I, I have this feeling that we had a speaker here, and I can't remember who it was and what he did, uh, and, uh, and how he did it, but he was able to uh, to maximize, in fact, the uh, um, recall and precision. Joshua Lutman. Joshua Lutman. Really? In yeah. passing? Yeah, in passing. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So I think that might give you a much better result. Because we know from, uh, uh, from part of speech labeling and from, uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from, uh, Maximum entropy, uh, not maximum entropy, from EM algorithm, inside outside algorithm, that if you give it the best probabilities and then perform inside outside algorithm uh, unsupervised, it gets worse. Yeah. No, I don't think it was Joshua Goodman because he wanted here when Joshua Goodman. Yeah, yeah. No, not this time. Long, long back, I think. A year ago, he came here, by the way, he came here on September 11, yes. and he couldn't go back, so he gave his second half. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, I didn't think he did. It was in 96 or something. I guess, I think it's... No, but there was also a talk, I think Andrew McCallum did something, not in parsing, he did it in some other context. Yeah, but uh, yeah, somebody did it, uh, maybe not oh, parsing, maybe it for nine, but nine the nine point nine is nine. that there was uh, one did not maximize the, problem, the likelihood one maximize something that one really wants maximized, all right? Yeah, bracketing is much Huh? The bracketing is much better. So well, maybe. I, I missed Fernando's talk. Did he, Fernando Ferreira, did he talk about I don't know. It's not Fernando. You know, you can't understand Fernando. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know.
Is this a supervised learning or unsupervised learning? Well, this goes on the supervised. This goes on the supervised. Maybe it goes like a higher. Okay. Yeah. So it's not supervised. Yeah. Yeah. With these named entities, it's even worse than 5 to 10 percent, right? Because even within the named entity, there is structure, and you don't even know that. Yeah. I mean, 5 percent of the words might be named entities, but you don't even know the structure. Itself. Yes. We Most of them are at least a couple of words. Yes, certainly we found that the named entity uh, uh, process is not that useful. Uh, it's not uh, as useful as, uh, for example, TKU data. Yeah, when comparing AP news with, with Wall Street Journal, were the changes consistent? I mean, they should be very inconsistent, right, since you cannot learn something. That's what we thought. Uh, for example, that's what we, what we thought, but the, in fact, it's, uh, it's probably not the case. For the, uh, the example I gave, that was taken on the, you know, the, that's real data, it's not that I, uh, I made up. And uh, for that particular phrase, for example, it appears in uh, the both corpus about uh, 600 times. So even for that phrase, you have 600 uh, cases of uh, cross brackets. Right, but you can learn those, right, if they're consistent. If, if the same thing changes into this thing all the time, then you learn that consistently this kind of cross bracketing will change into... Yes, that's the one thing of, yeah, we are thinking of, for example, we can build a model, for example, at the AP Tree Bank. You uh, use that model to pass a uh, Wall Journal uh, corpus. Um, instead of using that as training, we use that output for our inducing feature. That is probably uh, what you are thinking. Yeah. But for something like that, how many sentences in the English Wall Street Journal tree bank did you need before you discovered that there is a discrepancy between AP and Wall Street Journal? No, in this feature, you don't discover the discrepancy, right? You just uh, Counting the uh, say, if you decide to use that feature, feature induced from the uh, output of uh, the cross-domain model, you just uh, you know um, hopefully you 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 will you will hope that the model can learn what feature will be useful. No, what I'm saying is that maybe this is not the main issue at all because maybe it appears once in a thousand cases and you might really know. Because I think the more serious problem is what Fred pointed out that for the missing parts. We don't have a good criterion, and I say you are wrong, and nobody has a good criterion. Yeah. Oh, was yeah, it Michael Arnold? I'm sorry. Because he Maybe had the Collins, you're right. No, this was too uh, recent, and I would remember that. Oh, you think this was some years ago? No, 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 no. It was this spring. Maybe it was Chris Manning then. No, no. Chris Manning was practically <laughs> yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's yes, right. absolutely. We have to look up his uh, state. No, we have his uh, foils, uh, transparencies, or whatever. Yes, 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 that's what it was. Right? Is it online? Yeah, it's online. Okay. Where can I do He was here, I think he was here last week. This is correct. I will use you for memory. <laughs> 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 well, I was going to make another suggestion, uh, okay. and that is that if you annotate it in the right way, part of the uh, alternative corpus, then maybe you could use braille learning to transform the alternative corpus to, uh, uh, to the correctly annotated data, mm -hmm. and then use that transformation on the rest of the alternative corpus, and only then Bring it in. Mm -hmm. I would then use it. I mean, can you use it like this? Or? Yeah, you, no, but you, you could then use it like this, but you wouldn't have to go up to the to the top uh, you'd label. It. You'd have it correct in various places. Much because the braille learning would tell you where it is doing uh, uh, things right and where it's doing. Okay. okay.